This is another 419 Grind exclusive. Sports and entertainment. Chris, fun. What's good? Good. Toledo. I'm blessed, man. Humble to be here. I'm glad you uh, invited me. Thanks for coming, this. though. Thanks for coming. Oh, no problem. Appreciate man. it. Um, so, what, where, where, what part of Toledo did you grow up in? Um, pretty much most uh, west side of Toledo. West side. Um, yeah. Um, went to McKinley for two years. Went to Longfellow. Um, then DeVoe, and then started high school. Okay. What year did you graduate from start? Oh five. Oh five. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where did you go after high school? Did you go straight to college? Um, or? I was part of the Toledo Excel program. Okay. Uh, when I call, when I refer to my dad, I'm calling him Suge Knight because he looked like okay. Suge Knight. <laughs> so yeah, Suge Knight got me into the Toledo Excel program. Yeah. Um, you know, a summer scholarship program. Yeah, by, my, U, by UT. My kids do that program. And uh, I got a full ride with UT. Just um, got to keep a certain GPA. In yeah. Summer school. And then I went to UT for a couple of years, and then that was it. And then, like I said, in no way I joined the military and left. Okay. You joined the military where? Which? Um, Air Force. Uh, in 2008, I joined the Air Force in 2008 and then uh, did eight years active duty. I uh, did a tour in Afghanistan um, in 2013, and then uh, I separated in 2016. Separate from the military? Yeah. So you have no affiliation at all? No. Okay. My, my son is in the Air Force right now. Mm-hmm. He went uh, actually January twenty eighth was when he uh, started his tra- his uh, his uh, what do you call we call it? What is it called? boot camp? Boot camp, yeah, mm-hmm. boot camp. I was about to say training camp, like football. Yeah, boot <laughs> camp. Uh, he also was in uh, Toledo Excel, so kind of with the same path. So he he skipped college and went straight to the Air Force. Right. Uh, my daughter's in Toledo Excel right now. Yeah, it's a good program. Yeah, uh, Doctor yeah. Helen Cooks. Like yeah. I said, I was Group thirteen. Okay. Um, you know, and uh, we. Uh, and then I went to South Africa in 04 because of that. And then as soon as South Africa happened, I knew I was bigger than this. What? Uh, so what did you do in South Africa? Johannesburg, um, we uh, we did um, met with their high school students, mm-hmm. interacted with them, and then toured around the city. Um, and then we did. I did a safari hunt, um, pretty much, you know, going through the you know little jungle, or whatever, right, right. Um, uh, looking at you know. Animals from zebras, the lions, the whole nine. So, wow. um, and then just touring for real. How was it in Africa, in South Africa? Like, what was the experience like? Um, I mean, it was dope. I mean, it wasn't like what people have put uh, pictured on TV. Yeah, just animals, and then people just and they, you know, with not knowing, blowing cloths. And, yeah, and, yeah, like what they put that picture of South Africa. It was a beautiful city. Yeah, uh, people are friendly. Food is legit. Wow, like. It's one of the best experiences in my life, for real. That's yeah. what made me leave Toledo. Okay. Would you go back? Oh, yeah, in a heartbeat. Yeah. In a heartbeat because, I mean, the people are just super friendly. Right. You know what I mean? And, like, it's just, it's just dope, for real. Like, I recommend anyone to go there yeah. and and take that facade of just, oh, Africa is just animals and wildlife and they, they're they actual. Right. <laughs> have civilization yeah, there. Yeah, civilization. So, Houses and yeah. yeah, like they're not in the best conditions. Obviously, in some parts, right, way worse than the projects. Make Wilers or something look like like a mansion. You know wow. what I mean? Yeah, make the Cherry Woods or Manor look like like they they look they got bread. Wow, that's how bad it is in some of the parts in South Africa. Wow, so it was humbling. Um, I'm glad I went at 17 years old. That's why I'm kind of ahead of the game mentally on on certain aspects. Yeah, how long were you there? Uh, for two weeks. Two weeks. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's an experience. Anywhere for two weeks that is outside of home city, mm-hmm. or home state, is an experience. Right. So I mean, I can only imagine being in uh, another country, a third work, a third world country. You know, right. quote unquote, because you know, it's, there's some good parts and there's some bad parts. And yeah, and then people are scared to travel sometimes because yeah. what they see and 
Right. I know. mean, especially to Africa. Right. A lot of, I know uh Akon, was it Akon that was talking about uh uh especially when all when the George Floyd thing happened, uh he was saying, you know, black people come to Africa. Mm. <laughs> I know that's a big exactly. step. Somebody just say, Okay, let's let's just jump and, and do yeah. it. But I mean I understand what he's saying. Like I mean people black people gotta take the first step in getting your passport anyway. Yeah. People don't know how to get a passport, so right. Some people don't know the documentation right. and all of that, but uh, yeah, I've had my passport since '04. Since '04, yeah, and it expires every ten years. Yeah, re up, you know, with your old passport. It's just that simple, you know. Just go to the post office, ID, right, and you good. Take your little picture, yeah, and you got it. It's charged one seventy at max, and that's it. So your experience in the Air Force did that have a, a big uh, impact on? Um, as far as traveling outside of uh, Toledo or Ohio, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, as far as the Air Force go, I only went to do two locations really. I went to D.C., which I did my four years there, okay, uh, Washington D.C., and then I did uh, my other four years in California in the Bay Area, okay. And uh, but my personal travel, it was all me. Yeah, I said I had yeah. some friends that was ten years older than me. They showed me the ropes. We, you know, we going to Dominican Republic. We going to. Col- I just went to Colombia a couple of years ago. Right. Uh, I went to England, Ireland. This, um, these, these, these countries. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of traveling. Yeah. So it's about bonding. It's about taking people yeah. that you, you, you. That's on your level. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, I love to travel too, but I've never been outside of North America. Yeah, it's, which is crazy. My brother's been to Amsterdam, been to London, been to. Italy, because yeah. um, he went to school in London for acting. So, and that, when we, and when you travel, like you get much way more love than you yeah. do in your own country. Right? How, does, know, that, how people, does that feel? What's that experience like? Well, I mean, it's just they more friendly. Black is king in these countries. Like wow. black is king because we just you know we we kind of started civilization anyway, right? And those roots, so people are just more friendly than us, but. Uh, you know, I just talked to Sugar about this other day, like the London actors that come over here, like you know, uh, Idris the, Elba, Idris Elba, the guy from Get Out, yeah, um, the dude from Snow Snowfall, and and Star. Oh, he's from he's from England. Yeah, really, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay, and yeah, the guy Franklin, from, Franklin, yeah, um, the guy from uh, Star Wars, yeah, the black guy. Like they racism in London is hidden. It ain't like America, like it's in your face. Okay. So they just come here. Yeah, but like. But we we just get more love here. But people are not going to leave America because it's the opportunity here. Yeah, you well, know what I mean? quote unquote land of the opportunity. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, speaking of opportunity, when when did you come back to Toledo? And well, I'm, just tell me about the story of uh, when you came back and you, your brother decided to uh, come up with the Toledo. Well, um, I was in Virginia when Drake came up. Uh, shout out to my brother, love him to death. Uh, he came up with uh, Toledo Open, I think it was around 2017-ish. Yeah. Um, and uh, when he came out with it, um, I really didn't catch on yet until like maybe later that year. Um, and then then he started sending me stuff like, yo, send it, send it to where I was at in Virginia. I started wearing it. And then people in D.C. and Virginia was like, yo, where did you get that at? And then – really. And I didn't even tell my brother, like, yo, we got some. Like, I just packed my bags, transferred my job from Virginia to Michigan, where I'm still at now, and just, like, yo, Drake, we got, we're getting a store, wow. hands down. So I just start doing everything, trademark, finding a storefront, the whole nine, because I wanted to show black people that we can have our own store. You ain't got to go to that Franklin Park Mall no more. Right. You can go to Franklin Park Mall to get some shoes. But you, the shopping experience at the mall is terrible. No one yeah. wants to shop anymore no. like that. Yeah. So I just wanted to show black people we can have our own storefront. It's a legit store. Right. And you're going to get that customer experience. Yeah. So. Yeah, because I, mean, I, I came in there, uh, I think it was last year. I had these shoes, probably the shoes I have on now. Mm-hmm. I was like, uh, I need a shirt. <laughs> right. <laughs> I need a shirt to match these shoes. And right. he was like, I got something for you. Right. So yeah, I mean that's the, that's the kind of stuff that uh, that people appreciate, especially black people, because that's what we do. 
Right. We want to match everything. You know, right. it was and coordinated, whatever. You know. You're not going to find that at the mall. No. <laughs> you're no. just not. Yeah. And especially with the, these different colorways of shoes. Right. These Yeezys and yeah, yeah. the Air Maxes and all that. Like, my brother's going to make a tie-dye for you or he's going to make our logo custom to that shoe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're not getting you're not getting that nowhere else. Right. So. Now, what what's the experience been like as far as, like, having a, a brand uh, not just a business, but a brand in Toledo. Mm-hmm. Um, and how how's the reception as far as uh, Toledo was in each community, the black community and outside of the black community? Uh, I mean, the black community showed us a lot of love. Um, it takes time. Like I said, I didn't, I had high expectations because that's, I mean, that's just the person I am, but right. I had to do a reality check. Like people just not going to catch on. Like people are still saying the brand name wrong of like yeah, Toledo I, dope. I hear, I hear right. that a lot. Um, <laughs> I'm like, well, wait a minute, man. <laughs> yeah, it's never two. It's never been two words, <laughs> right? Yeah, well, that's our message. We want to say to people in Toledo are dope. There are some dope people, but they're right. just not getting that same. They're not getting that same clout, right? You know, it's overran. Toledo's overran with the negativity. It is, especially yeah. with like the recent events, Swainfield. You can go all day, right? But we've always been a negative type of city. I mean, I remember going to Scott Libby games. It was shooting there. Yeah. But you yeah. didn't vent. You didn't have social media to vent to that. Right, right, right. Oh, so, man, if it was social media back then. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, there would have been so many stories to tell. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, the experience has been great. Um, like I said, we had kind of start just trying to get some income by doing other people's shirts at the time. Right. Like the Art Museum, uh, the Mud Hand, uh, the radio stations downtown uh, with iHeart Radio doing a collab with them. Uh, I think the other races is kind of uh, they're starting to catch on. Like, okay, yeah, you know, this is a brand, but I have to continue to my job is to continue to show uh, Drake's genius in the logo. Right. So we're not trying to be in no local box and oh, this is just a local brand. Like, like I said, what I mentioned before, DC, Virginia, they seen our brand and it didn't matter if it said Toledo. Like, they just like the brand. Yeah. They like the logo. So I'm trying to reach past Toledo like I don't think that way right. so I, I don't put Toledo in a box you know? yeah and I think that's something that uh, a lot of local brands kind of kind of veer off of or, or stay away from as far as like expanding because they feel that it's named locally right. so only local people are going to uh, attach themselves to it or follow it right my company is, is the 419 grind mm-hmm. you think I want to stay local because it says the 419 grind correct no. No, that's just that's just the root of it, the where we started. Right. Of course, I want to expand it nationwide or, or whatever. That's why I started these different uh, podcasts and different uh, shows to get other people involved, so we can expand. Yeah, exactly. So I understand, you know, as far as like uh, expanding beyond the borders of Toledo. Yeah, I mean, there's some talented people here, but like I said, our parents didn't teach us entrepreneurship. No one knows what entrepreneurship is, right. and I'm not taught. I'm not taught taxes. I'm not taught entrepreneurship in a TPS school. The curriculum is boo boo. I, I that's it's true. I know that. I'm not going to learn anything about taxes or anything like that in a TPS school. Right or or in, real estate or real anything estate or, like that. or investment or anything or investment stocks all that. Right. Do you think that there's something that we can do as far as like. Uh, I don't want to say leaders of the community because I don't consider myself a leader of the community. <laughs> but as far as like adults who've been through uh, the school system, mm-hmm. who started businesses, who uh, see that, okay, this this is – we went through some ups and downs, some trial and errors, and we failed a lot of times. Like right. I failed a lot of times in, in businesses. We, we had conversations yes, before yeah. about it. Yeah, You're correct. And I think that if we were – take our experiences and teach the younger generation Mm -hmm. or people who coming up, who wants to learn how to do businesses. It'll kind of like, because they're not going to learn anywhere else. No, I'd rather them learn it from our, learn the failures from our experiences or from my experience than to have to deal with it themselves because they're not going to learn it in school. No, they're not. Um, Something like that is, I mean, that's just pretty much interning or, if someone is, you know, inspired to want to have their own clothing brand, I'll, I'll say this right now. Like, I consider me and my brother are considered influencers because now you see everyone that's doing merchandise for their own specific category. Yeah. You got people in the fitness. They got their own merch. You got the podcast. You got all that. So I know that people have been watching us and like, okay, I can do that too. Yeah. You know what I mean? But 
um, you know, it's a slippery slope because at sometimes you be like, oh, I did now everyone's following, but at the same time you like you want to help your own black people, you yeah. want to help your own, right? And then you like you know someone will hit me up like, yo, how did you do an LLC? Well, research like I did. Like don't now you're not now you're trying to take shortcuts because I went I did the groundwork right so yeah, as yeah. much as I want to help like you that. yeah stuff it's like a slippery that. slope yeah it's a slippery slope because right. people like, oh he 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 just want to look out for himself but that I've done the research you know what I mean right. so do the research too but people just gotta be passionate about if they really want to do this you know what I'm saying because it's not an easy road it's not you know I yeah. I have no we me and Drake had no fear. Yeah, we just say like, we're just gonna get a store. Hopefully, it works, and then people gravitate right. towards it. So yeah, I, I I posted something on Facebook uh, maybe about an hour or two ago, and I said, uh, "What is what is your big butt? Like, what is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I seen that's, that. that's stopping you right from starting what you want to start. Like, what is it? Because everything that 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 you think can stop you from starting something mm-hmm. is just an obstacle. There's right. there's I didn't have to do this. No, no, I didn't have to start this this podcast studio. I could have still had this at home, mm-hmm. but why would I do that? I wanted to make it to where uh, I can make money from it. First of all, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> I had other people come in and do their own shows. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's that was my big but. Like I can I can make this something bigger, but I'm comfortable at home. Right. But I don't want to be comfortable anymore. Right. I understand. Yeah, I want to e- expand and and offer my services to other people. Right. Like like Toledo needs. All the podcasts they can get at this point, yeah. Because this this younger generation is at a different, they they have a different mindset. Um, I would say my generations, uh, like I said, I'm 80s, but I'm late 80s. Right. Um, but the the 90s and on, like them having children, that's a different ball game. Like yeah. it ain't when my parents raised me, and and so forth. Like it was, it was structure, it was discipline. Ain't no discipline no more. So. Yeah. That's it's it's just different now, you know what I mean? It's different, and it's it's hard to decipher who is I don't want to say real, mm-hmm. but who's serious about what they want to do, right? Like I get I get so many um, artists mm-hmm. that contact me and say, "Hey, can I come on the podcast and do a, do a, a show?" Right? Like, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's possible. It, it can happen, but. I, uh, the, the reason why I do this is because I want to get people on here who has an influence. Correct. Like you. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm talking to you. That's why I talk to Tracy. That's why I talk to uh, other business owners and other uh, artists mm-hmm. that are have some kind of influence in the city so we can show or discuss. They, we can talk about stuff that other people can kind of say, oh, okay, that's how they did that. Or uh, that's how they feel about that. Not, mm-hmm. not necessarily to give away your secrets, but... Mm-hmm. Tell people uh, the process. Right. And, you know, uh, and it's not too many of us. Like you said, you mentioned Tracy. I mean. uh, Yeah, I I could mention uh, too many. (laughs) You know, yeah. I mean, you can count on your hand for real. It's just not that many of us, specifically my age group. Yeah. Specifically, you know. um, That's that's just the thing, though. Like, it's just not too many of us. And shows like this, podcasts like this. Well, you know, hopefully, you know, add more of us doing that. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why I, I started this thing was to um, not become an influence, but kind of uh, show people right. that you can do whatever you want to do, as long as you do it mm-hmm. the right way, as long as you do it and do it with some kind of uh, uh, urgency right? to where you know, you know, you, you can get to where you want to get as long as you take the right steps. And once you do that, there's going to be other people that say, they see what you're doing and say, okay, um, I'm not going to give you a handout, but here's a tip. Right. That's why I ask people like, how did, you know, where did you start? Where did you, you know, what school did you go to? What part of the city did you uh, grow up in? Uh, how did you start your business? Because that kind of, that, that'll say, they'll have somebody that's listening to say, okay, I grew up in that part of the city. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to start that kind of business. Um, he grew up in, on the south side or the west side of Toledo and went to start. I did, too. And I want to start my own uh, YouTube channel or whatever. Right. So, it, you know, it is kind of like, a, you know, we are influenced to, to the younger generation or somebody, even somebody older who wants to, who didn't know that they could start something. Yeah, I mean, entrepreneurship is no age group. Like I said, 
Um, if people are hip to the McDonald's story, Ray Kroc was 53 years old. Right. And he took the McDonald's name and made it to a realty group and stole what? the McDonald's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. name from the two brothers. Right, right. And he was 53 years old. There's no age limit on entrepreneurship. Like I said, I'm in my early 30s. Like, if it's it's not it's never too late to start your own brand, like or your you know entrepreneurship and what you do. But um, people from the hoods need to hear this because, um, like I said, I'm not a popular person in Toledo. Don't want to be. Right. You know, what I mean, that's just not my flow. You know, but people from the north, from the south, these real hoods, they need to hear this stuff because yeah. then they wouldn't do what they do. You know, what I mean, but that's that's a slippery slope too. Well, it, I think. When you when you talking about especially north side, uh, east Toledo, south deep south Toledo, like right, you know what I'm talking about, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, they are uh, groomed in that environment, mm-hmm. so they grow up in that environment. They see their uncles or parents or auntie or whatever doing uh, whatever they do, right? And they follow that pattern. Right, because black people don't have a lot of choices, but you no. still have a choice. You do have a choice. You still can be Natasha Howard. You can still be right. Bunny, but that's just in sports. Ohio and Toledo, we synonymous with sports. You're going to be found yeah. in Toledo. Right. But when it comes to fashion or entertainment or being an artist, a rapper, yeah. you, you have to move. Yeah, you do. You got to move. You're not, you you know, a lot of people don't think, a lot of people don't know that Katie Holmes is from Toledo. Right. You know, but she left. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, my brother left. He was, he's an actor. He was in the Wu Tang movie. He was right. in, uh, he was in uh, Snowfall. He was in SWAT on, on CBS with right. uh, Shamar Moore. Okay. He moved out of Toledo because he couldn't stay here and be an actor. No, you can't. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You can't. Right, right, right. Exactly. I'm agreeing. I'm, I'm agreeing. <laughs> but as far and, and musicians too, like, yeah. There's Tub who moved from uh, Toledo to LA. Right. Uh, Julius Darrington went out to LA. And he worked with R. Kelly and other and uh, mm-hmm. and Jeremiah and other artists. So, I think it's it's kind of a, a like you said a slippery slope mm-hmm. when you're talking about artists in Toledo making it right because you can make it as far as Toledo famous, mm-hmm. but as far as being in Toledo and being a artist, a, a true artist, uh, and making it, yeah, you gotta leave. You gotta leave. You gotta get out of here. Mm-hmm. Any kind of artist, yeah. Yeah, that's music, that's acting, that's and don't a producer. And, and, and don't come back. I mean, I can <laughs> uh, I mean Life Jennings didn't come back. No, you didn't. know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, like yeah. people forgot about Life Jennings. Right. Yeah, he's <laughs> from know? Toledo, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Yeah. You can uh, make it just and this and now and those fields though, you just have to leave. But I think um that's the that's the thing about Toledo though. I think we can make it here being here. Like yeah. there's so many people that's left Toledo just to move to Atlanta or LA or whatnot. And now they see Toledo playing like, Oh, <laughs> we have a brand now. It's right. been, you know, and that's why we don't have a target market either. I have grannies coming in. Want to yeah. rep the city. I right. have from age. Oh, yo, can you do that on a onesie? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we don't have an age group for real. Right. So, because the older generation never had a brand, they're not going to wear university of Toledo rockets. They're not going to wear the mud hens. Right. When you travel, you you have a brand now you can represent yourself yeah. in. So that's the thing. Yeah, I when I wore uh, like the hat I got from y'all, I, I wore at work, and then people were like, "Where you where you get the hat from?" And it wasn't it wasn't just black people, right? It was white older women exactly. who wanted the hat. Like, oh, it's a place on the Savannah called Toledo. Just go, you know, go right. get you a hat. And it's 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 kind of like okay, you know, uh, that that should tell other people like, okay, you don't have to. Uh, you can start your business as far as being a black entrepreneur. Exactly. You don't have to target the to black the, audience only. Right. I, yeah. people, I think a lot of people are like afraid of that. I don't know if that's. I mean, I mean, it's a stigma thing, you know what I mean? Like, and that's something like we have to continue to try to break, Um, you know, like, you know, when a white person comes in the store, they need, you know, we don't, I, I mean, I put the store on Savannah, on purpose right? Yeah. because there's only two streets I can go to the mall, Monroe <laughs> and Sylvania. Yeah. And Sylvania, you know, closer to Secor, it's more safer than somewhere else. Yeah. So they need to feel comfortable too in a way like, okay, I can come in here and ain't nothing going to happen. You right, know what right, I mean? Right. Because we don't make it easier for ourselves. You, yeah, we just that, know. That's true. Um, and that, that's always been the problem. Like we're, we're, 
we're you they created the problem and then and then we're doing the work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like we're doing the Swain Fields. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm not wanna oh, I'm not about to be around Swain. <laughs> I'm not about to be around. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, he's another he's a, a black entrepreneur, but he ain't doing that Swain Field. He ain't doing that hill, you know what I mean? So yeah. that's just the thing. Like you gotta create a comfortability with, with them. You know what I mean? Because that's what that's just what 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 happens. Do you get uh do you get I don't want to say backlash, but yeah. Do you get backlash from our community when you don't get involved with uh, certain stuff in, in the city? Uh, I don't really get no, me and Drake don't get black clash because we're not popular enough to be black clash that. You don't think you're popular enough? No, we're not. We, we, no. I mean, you, you probably own the, one of the hottest brands in Toledo right now, but we're not in the, we're not in the streets though. Not a lot of people know us. They know of us. Okay. Yeah. But we're not going out. We're not out there. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's on purpose too because we just, you know, we just put our foot in the the ground and just went to work. You know what I mean? We didn't, we don't ask people to wear our brand. We didn't reach out to the, you know, the Toledo celebrities or whatnot. Like, if you like it, you'll come in. Right. Like, we're not sweating. Like, you know, we didn't go to the, you know, desires and all them like much love to them like they people gonna choose who that they want to wear you know what i mean so right. um no we no we, we don't get really no black clash you know what i mean like i'm always gonna be down for the black community but they need to see toledo next to pro medica they need to see that right, they need to right. see toledo toledo next to owens corn next right. to libby glass yeah. next to jeep yeah, and then they were like, "Yo, these cats are really serious." Right, you as a, I mean? as a recognizable brand from Toledo. When you think about Toledo, you think about Jeep, you think about uh, Owens, mm-hmm. uh, you think about uh, ProMedica, right? And you want to think about Toledo, exactly. I want people to think about the four one nine grind, mm-hmm. not just because it's from Toledo, but it, it represents um, what Toledo uh, embodies or, or or shows as far as like how how hard we work to build our brands right and and i mean the thing is like now toledo now toledo has a clothing brand like you have to come you have you have to fly into toledo to get our stuff yeah. Spe- specifically the exclusive stuff like you mentioned earlier to match your shoes no yeah. we're not putting tie dyes online right we're not putting no custom no you want to come in the city to get something to represent where you came from yeah you know what i mean so that's the beauty of it yeah now how how do you uh As far as marketing, like, do you have a, I know you say you don't have like a, a target market, but how do you, as far as like, uh, do you market on like radio, um, um TV or print? Well, um, pretty much, uh, I've done pretty much everything for real. Uh, and I'm still going, um, I've done billboards. Um, I've done, uh, radio. I've done a collab with iHeartRadio. Uh, we did a commercial that shot during the Super Bowl around the Super Bowl time last year. Um, I've done Instagram. I've done Facebook uh, ads. Uh, I'm pretty much done the whole thing for real. Now yeah. uh, I have an event coming up uh, at a golfing event uh, because that's where business is done. Hmm. So golfing event, yeah, a golfing event. That's different. Yeah, yeah, definitely different. <laughs> um, and uh, that's me just evolving as a entrepreneur and trying to. Um, you know, do the best I can on marketing for real. But yeah, that you know, if if social media wasn't um, if it wasn't around, we would still blow up because right. even though traditional marketing is more expensive because you got to do TV, you got to do radio, you got to do print, we would have been found anyway. I don't think social media um, is the reason why we blew up. I just think people want to rep the city. Yeah, uh, I'm about to say because it's, it's a new, uh, a unique brand, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's Toledo, right? So it represents uh, the city, but it's something unique that uh, not not everybody can catch on because uh, you see, uh, mud made or mm-hmm. I'm from the mud, correct? And then you see other people <laughs> that right. kind of. Uh, <laughs> I don't right. want to say copy, but yeah, right. they take the, they take the 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 mud hand or whatever the the same color scheme mm-hmm. and use that for their for their yeah, brand, correct? And it's like okay, but that's what but that's what uh it's it's an identity that you know Toledo people from Toledo 
associate themselves. They like, I'm from the mud, I'm from the gutter. Right. A majority of people in Toledo, especially the black community, think they from the gutter. They right. think they from the bottom, bottom. So they're going to associate themselves on mud made. Um, but there's a whole bunch of mud maids, um, people from the mud in Florida or Mississippi yeah, San or whatnot, Antonio. Yeah. San Antonio. So it's just an identity thing. But I will, you know, me and Drake will change that. Uh, we just want to call you dope. You a dope person. Yeah. So be dope. You know what I mean? What right. you do. You know what I mean? Like I can care less about that mud hand bird. I can care less about it. You yeah. know what I mean? It's an identity. It's an identity that people just want to associate themselves with. Right. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I've, I've been asked before, mm-hmm. uh, why don't I have, uh, anything to do with Toledo in my logo as far as like the, the mud hen right. stuff, like why I don't, that's not what I, that's not what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Like my, the identity of the 419 grind is just, that's it. Right. I mean, do you run a identity, identify yourself as part of the baseball team? No, I wouldn't. You yeah. don't play baseball anyway. Right. None, none of you people play baseball. Right. So... <laughs> But like, are you going to associate yourself with the walleye? Are you going to? Did you associate yourself with Toledo Storm? Right. No, you didn't. Yeah, yeah. But that, that's why I'm saying that's not enough. It's not like Atlanta or LA. You like, you can do the Hawks, you can do the Falcons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you got to create your own identity. Yeah. Like a brand is not a logo. A brand is a gut feeling that you get when you buy something. Right. I tell people all the time. They they ask me because um, I I design logos and stuff. Right. Okay, can you, they said, can you design me a brand? Like, uh uh-uh, that's not how it works. Now, there's a brand identity package, which includes your logo, your business cards, your letterhead, your uh, marketing uh, sheets, whatever, your your flyers. Right. That's branding. That's how you do branding. Exactly. It creates a presence around your business. That's that's what branding is. Right. Uh, Most people don't understand that. Nah, no. Yeah, can you like can you kind of talk about um the branding idea behind uh Toledo? Um I mean pretty much the branding part is like when a when a customer comes into the store that person is the brand. Okay. You know, white, black, whatever race cuz they want to represent if you view that person is how you view. It. If you view oh that's e, that's that's bunny coming in, eat bunny coming in the store. That's a boxer, you know. He, you know, my perception of him is what the brand represent. Okay, it could be an average Joe, you know. Um, it, it, a customer is pretty much your brand for real. So anytime people travel, go to Miami, go wherever, uh, that's the brand because right. people are families are traveling to represent the city. That's that's what branding is. Yeah. Um. Obviously, what you said with the letterheads and all that, like you got to put your logo. On everything, yeah. you gotta you gotta do sponsorships, and and that's what I'm doing Monday. Okay, I'm 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 sponsoring a golf event. Yeah, you know, I'm dropping whatever bread for that that's dope. because because people are not doing that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So you gotta put that brand, you gotta put that logo everywhere you can, and that's what branding is. But the people represent the brand. Okay, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Um. Now where 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 do you go as far as like um uh ideas? Do you just like you and Drake just sit down and talk about as far as like I know y'all come up with different uh We have a lot of designs. We okay. just haven't pushed it. Okay. And then since Toledo is so small, let's say someone come out with oh Drake is the creative tie dyeing period. Now now tie dyeing was back in back in the seventies yeah. or whatever with Woodstock and all that. Right. But as far as tie dyeing your own merchandise, your own brand, Drake is the start of that. Yeah. I'm not gonna take Drake is the first one period. Now everyone else wants to tie dye now. So um as far as ideas, like Drake, uh we we'll sit down and talk. We haven't pushed stuff out, but if you're the first person to push out something People pay attention, especially on Facebook, like yeah. who who was the first, who was the start of it. Right. You know, you can be like, oh, I, we were the first ones to do it on crop tops or whatnot. And then everyone else doing crop tops, everyone else doing bikers and all that. So I'm not, we not about to be in that box. So we you, not. you don't worry about that kind of uh, competition? No. Um, I wouldn't say there's no competition until we in our own lane. 
Uh, mermaids in their own lane. Midwest kids is in their own lane. And we we supposed to get bread together. You know what I mean? Right. It's, I don't really do, you know, I don't really see ourselves as competition. You know, everyone can wear everyone's brand. You know what I mean? Right. But there's certain ones that I will not participate in because I know that I, I wouldn't wear it. And, you know, for someone that can have a weak mind, they'd be like, oh, you just hating on my brand. No, it's not a real brand. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just not. You know what I mean? Like, you're just doing it as a hobby or just you hustling. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not taking it serious for real. Right. So, you well, know. What do you say to somebody like that who who's not really, who has a, uh, they're making T-shirts, mm-hmm. but they're not taking it serious. I mean, at the end of the day, that's up to them. Like you said, if 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 it, if it feeds the kids at night, that's what it is. Like I'm not gonna knock people hustle. Right. I'm just not. But you know, if you don't take it serious, I mean, if you got your, you know, you you in you know all these areas, and you really ain't found your niche, then I don't. I, I have right. nothing to. I don't have nothing to say about that. You know what I mean? Like hustling, hustling. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, if you don't take it serious, I mean, and it ain't built for everybody. Entrepreneurship ain't built for everybody. It's a roller coaster. It you is. know, one day it can be great, and then some one day, you know, cus- like we have one customer, you know, the next day, this is a roller coaster. You know right. what I mean? So, um, that's just what it is. Yeah. Are you uh, and Drake are talking? Are you talking talks or thoughts or about uh, expanding? As far as the the location, um, getting a second location, um, or satisfied with you, where you at right now? Well, I think we we satisfy right now. I mean, this Corona is a real, it's yeah. it's, it's serious. Uh, we was thinking about moving. As a matter of fact, um, just down the street a little more, yeah, um, and get a different target, different group, in the El Camino area. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. Um, in that plaza. Um, but this Corona is a serious, like I said, it's unpredictable this year. 2020 has been Man. by far the worst year I've ever experienced. Um, this by far. So we, we still surviving though. People are still traveling. People are traveling more yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> with this Corona, right. even though stuff is shut down. So I think people just want to get away from Toledo at this point. Yeah. Now um, how, how did, uh, Corona affect, affect the business? Um, I would say in a good way because people found out we had an online. Oh, okay. We were online. Yeah. We've been online for a while for right. real, but yeah. people haven't, you know, people really wasn't shopping on there. But with the corona, people start shopping on there now. So right. uh, I get it, though, because we don't put all of our, our merchandise on there. Like, we just put the basics on yeah. there. And then when people want to customize to their Jordans or their Yeezys, you got to come in. So, I mean, it affected us maybe a good month at the most. But, you know, when DeWine did the, you know, you just got to wear a mask and all that, then we right. was we was fine. You know what I mean? Like, we was good for real. Yeah. 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 I mean, 2020, like you said, has been, <laughs> it's, it's been, it's been the probably the craziest year. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, even with starting this right here, right. like, uh, we still working out the kinks as far as, like, having people come in mm-hmm. as far as doing their own podcast. Because there had to be some kind of procedure where they had to, you know, clean up behind themselves, and I mean, we don't, we don't really know yet. We're right. we still trying to work it out. And yeah, it's it's a, it's a different beast. You know what I mean? Like college football is done pretty much, like almost. Yeah. Like I'm a big, huge old state fan, yeah. and <laughs> that's gonna hurt. Like, yeah. what am I supposed to do on Saturday? It's right. like early. No football. You know, anyway, no football. But I, I guarantee you, the NFL ain't gonna be canceled. It's just too much bread. No, I don't. I don't know, man. It's gonna happen. I don't know because <laughs> the last I heard was um, a lot of the players were backing out, right? And some of the players who wanted to play are complaining about it's not being it's not safe enough, right? Right. So if you volunteer to to Pe- play and getting paid right what are you complaining about yeah so now the owners are like okay you don't want to play i mean <laughs> right. you say you want to get paid and now you don't want to play yeah you can't have it both ways yeah you can't it's, uh, uh odell beckham oh, Jr. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you already knew <laughs> yeah. he's one of the main ones mm-hmm. like okay if you want to play just play right shut up and play at this we, point we gave you that option that yeah. not to play right you know at the mean? beginning and you chose to play right. so now you don't want to i mean I, I really do hope that the nfl I really, I, I was hoping college football. I mean, I'm a yeah. Ohio, Ohio State fan too, right? But I hope we get some kind of football. Basketball is cool, right? 
It's not the same. It's, though. it's not the same. Like I, I, I watched. I watched maybe the 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 opening night of the Lakers versus Clippers, and then I haven't watched no game really? since. You know, what I mean, just it's just different. I, you know what I mean, been, like been, I'm gonna tune into the playoffs. Yeah, it's like these games right now. It's like it. You know, I know like people. Was, like, I know you a huge basketball fan. Yeah, I'm a huge basketball fan too. But it's just different. You know it's I mean? different, but I, I there's think there's no such thing as home court advantage. No, like the Lakers got the number one seed. Like, yeah, well, what's the point? Yeah, <laughs> you know, because you're gonna be at home. Everybody gonna be in the same spot yeah, anyway. You and I, you're not traveling to I LA. Even, you know, I didn't even think about that. No, you're not traveling to LA. So yeah. where's you, where's the home court advantage? At? Right. What's the, the seeds don't even matter right now. No, I don't. It's, it, it's college. Yeah, it's college exactly. basketball to a point. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't know how they doing the the, uh, the playoff format. I don't know if they doing it the same way. Well, I think they still doing one versus eight and so forth. Oh, okay, yeah. in the five game series or, or seven game series. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. It's just, I mean, it feels. I, I just like it because it's basketball. Right, right. It feels a lot different. It feels like I'm watching a video game mm-hmm. or something, but it, it just feels different. I just, I was hoping that football. I'm a baseball fan too, so baseball is is back, but. They're having some problems, of course. Yeah, because they didn't do what the NBA yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. They can't. Like, the NFL, like, all these other sports, so I think, I mean, other than hockey, like, you got to create a bubble. Yeah. You got to, NFL got to rent out a state. They need to move everyone out of the state or something. Like, they need to rent out, like, a Rhode Island or yeah. or Vermont <laughs> or something and and do a bubble there because NFL is just too way too bigger than, than yeah. the NBA. They got, what, you got to have players on the team? Yeah, you, you got the coaches, you got the assistant coaches, uh, you got the team, you got the staff. Trainers, all that. So you NFL needs to rent out a state, yeah, <laughs> and make a bubble of that. They right. need about I don't know how many football fields they need, but they need. You know, it's too it's too unpredictable with the NFL. Yeah, and then to play football with no audience, no, <laughs> can't happen. You, what are you doing? You doing signal calls? Well, the quarterback doing or signal calls? What they saying is the stadium is big enough to where they can social distance within the right. stadium. Okay, you can have what a third of the, of the audio or twenty five percent of the audience. Yeah, I mean, this is the worst year too. I'm a huge Steelers fan. Are you? I'm a Cowboys. I'm a fan. Huge, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, it's the Steelers and Cowboys. That was to lead, the, the first right Hall yeah, of Fame game. Yeah, like still, this is Steelers and Cowboys yeah, city. Period. Yeah. And the, there's there's no yeah, other, other fans teams base. don't even matter. Yeah, they don't. So you know, they play the Hall of Fame game and they supposed to play at Dallas this Week year. Seven, no, yeah. yeah. Like that's hurtful. It like, is very I'm, hurtful. I'm flying to Dallas. I've never been to Jerry's World. I haven't never. Either. I've been to Heinz Field. All right, but never been to Jerry's. That World. That was my plan this year. Was to go. Like yeah, like I seen the schedule. I'm like, I know we playing them this year because it's every four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the year, but this 2020 has ruined a lot. Man, I was I was planning on going to a Hall of Fame game. Right, and going to yeah, Dallas. exactly. Now with uh, man, I, I just still hope that. Uh, it can happen. Dallas can happen. Right. This year, but the Steelers and Cowboys is a Super Bowl for real. No matter when they play, it's a Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Because my brother's a Steelers fan, mm-hmm. so it's like it's been like that forever, my, my whole life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and, it's it's tough. It's right. tough for real. It is. I mean, twenty twenty is is a tough year. Period. And then we got the uh, we got the the election coming up. Right. And, and Biden just chose Kamala. Oh, he did. I, yeah. didn't, I I was at work all day. Yeah, Biden just it. chose Kamala Harris to be the vice president okay, candidate. That, that could be a good thing. So, but like I said, I don't. Like I said it's unpredictable. The choices are Biden and and Trump. Which is, right. Okay. Take your pick. Yeah, take a pick. But him having uh, Kamala Harris is probably a big bonus. Yeah, especially to the, the uh, black community. Right. And uh, you you know you kind of appreciate it. You kind of think okay, he just, he just doing this to get the black vote. He, but exactly, he gonna get the black vote. Yeah, I mean, you know, because, you know, Trump and black people don't get along like that. So um, that's just the thing. <laughs> right. Um, I, I, I never really tried to get into politics um, before this year. Right. Like the only reason why, I mean, I've I've always voted. But as far as like having discussions about politics, like at work, it's very uncomfortable. Yeah, I I I, I don't do it. It's very uncomfortable because um, because you, you know, even with the with the posts, like you know, you you've you've seen the recent, you've seen with the even with the George Floyd, yeah, like hey, and then you got your and then you got your white people commenting, and then you like you know what unfriendly <laughs> blocking me you know what i mean like yeah. it's created this real division between us um because of that and like i said even even me 
like uh I'm a I'm gonna mention this on every podcast I am like on, on I'm on uh, uh by uh Tariq Nasheed uh Hidden Colors mm-hmm. and people are not hip to Hidden Colors. It's a five part documentary okay. that you get on Amazon and I've watched all five and when you watch them your 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 water's boiling. You ready to call out every white person you know, wow. literally. And like I said, I still do IT for the government. Uh-huh. So I called out every, I sent out a mass email to all my white colleagues. Like, you want to check up on me during the coronavirus, but you didn't check up on me when this George uh-huh. Floyd and these events, you know what I mean? So some some came out and apologized. Others stay silent. So, right. you know what I mean? Like, did I care about losing my job that day? Absolutely not. I didn't care. Like, cause my, my, my water was boiling yeah. because watching these, um, it, it gets, it's deep. It's super deep. Like I, I recommend anyone that want to learn their history on how we lost it in the first place to, to, to rent these or buy them on Amazon. I would buy them, but you need a DVD player. A lot of people don't have oh, a DVD, DVD player. Yeah. I still got my Blu-ray at home. I mean, if you yeah. got a PlayStation, you got a DVD. Yeah, player. right. Yeah. Um, I would get these hidden colors. Like I watched them. Like sometimes I gotta remind myself how how great I how great black people are for real, but they just don't know it. They literally just don't know it. You right. know what I mean? But if you uh, create a wireless or a manner and all that, like that wasn't your fault. If I'm born at the womb uh, from the wireless or the veil or all that. I'm already know I'm ten steps behind. Yeah, I don't have many choices. Right. A lot of people, uh, other races, are like well, they still have a choice. You yeah, know what I mean? I, but that's a slippery slope, though, because yeah. you didn't give us many options either. Right. I was talking about that with somebody else. I don't know if it was a podcast or somebody at work about how um, yeah, it was on a podcast. How when we got out of slavery, black people got out of slavery, right? Mm-hmm. And we were given zero. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. No kind of reparations or nothing. So they said, you're free. Go ahead. Three-fifths. Okay. <laughs> right. We, we three-fifths of a human. Go ahead and, and live. Okay. So we tried to live. Right. But we were already three steps behind at that time, right? Mm-hmm, correct. And so, we okay, we built up housing. And, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah, out of nothing. Mm-hmm. We built that. So they lit it on fire. Right. Now we ten steps behind because we started something. They took us away, took it away from us. So now, okay, they took away Tulsa. Uh, no more Black Wall Street. Right. So now we starting from zero. Okay, you can buy houses, but you can only buy houses within this line right here. Exactly. Redlining. Right. Redlining. Right. So now you ten steps behind, and you have another twenty steps before you can get to the the, the ten steps. Right. So and now they say, okay, those people are bad and they're poor and it's their fault Mm -hmm. you you have the same opportunities we have right but uh you're not doing anything with it no it's not that we don't don't, they're not doing anything with the opportunities is that they are so we are so i can't say they because we we are so um used to having nothing and being beat down and and shot down right that we conform to it Mm -hmm. so that that's what we do but we see it every day and we conform to it. Now, there's exceptions to the rule. Right. Always. Always exceptions yeah. to the rule. There's LeBron James who came out of nothing. There's us who came from, I won't say bad, a bad family, but uh, uh, we were not very well off coming up. But we worked ourselves up to where we are today. Right. And then there's some people who, in the same circumstance, who are in the same situation that they were in 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. I think uh, we we talked about this the other day with uh, with Suge and my 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 Drake's friend and uh, black people suffer from PTSD. Yeah, if you want to think about it, black black kids they don't white kids don't suffer anything compared to what black kids suffer. Right, I'm talking about what they see on the street, none of that. So that can be damaging. That's damaging long term. Right, it's damaging. So. So that's what's that's, and when you do that, that's what Swainfield happens. Yeah, because yeah. they don't know no better. You know what I mean? Right. That's so why every generation if, gets worse. Yeah. So if my parents is, if I'm smoking weed with my son, with my daughter, 
uh, what do you think that son and daughter going to be? You know what I mean? And then, uh, you know, the events that's happened, like, uh, people always say, oh, man, Toledo, you got to do better. I, I hate hearing that. What do you mean you got to do better? Like, don't say it. If if you want to uh, make a suggestion, like, I, I need to see some action. Right. You know, yeah. like, everyone goes on Facebook saying, we need to do better, Toledo. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 that's, I don't want to hear that. I know what what should be said or what should be done. It shouldn't. I mean, done. I mean, Nothing, I don't think anything should be said, right? Because that's all people do is talk. Like mm-hmm. that's why people like, talk. When all this stuff was going on, I didn't post anything about mm-hmm. it on Facebook right. at all. Yeah, I don't. I don't post either. No, I'm not a social media person. I'm not taking a picture of my food. I'm not taking a picture <laughs> of me working out. I'm not taking a picture of me. Oh man, I did 50 jumping jacks today. <laughs> like, uh, or I'm checked in at the airport. I don't care, yeah. you know. Like you said, but that's the thing. Like when when I see, I mean, that's just the era we live in. I'm not a poster. Like if I didn't have a business, I wouldn't have social media. I just wouldn't yeah. because I'm not. That's just not me. I don't do lime. I don't do the spotlight. Right. You ain't gonna know where I'm at. Yeah. None of that stuff for real. See, I I, uh, I go through this this love hate relationship with social media. I think we talked about this before too, to where I can go a year eight months to a year and not be on Facebook and people are like, what's wrong? Like, what, 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 where you at? Like, what's wrong? Like nothing. Yeah. I think I had said that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Like, yeah Disappear. You know like, no, nah, I just, I just need that kind of, that, that break, a detox. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, cause it, it it's can damaging. Be, it, it's very damaging. It's damaging. Very damaging. It's more negative and positive to my, in my knowledge, in my book, for real. Yeah, it is. It is. And that's why I, I, I when I post something on, on social media, I don't post my personal life, who I'm dating, mm-hmm. what kind of troubles I'm going through in life, or how terrible my job is. Not that it's terrible, but, you know, I, yeah. that's what people post. I'm, or if I'm injured in the hospital or anything yeah. like that. I don't, I don't yeah, post. Why, why, why would I take a picture of myself injured <laughs> with, a, with an IV? <laughs> Like what is the what what is that? Like I don't understand. Oh, I'm doing I'm doing okay. <laughs> like pray for me. Pray for me. Like, pray for me. I just got in a car accident. My nose is broken. Yeah, yeah. My all, both my legs are broken. Yeah. Like so, my I'm I'm grumpy old man with this. I'm like, if you didn't have social media, how you venting? Yeah. How you venting? How you taking pictures? Are you still with the Kodak? You know what I mean? With right. the Polaroid. Like, how are you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Go back to those days, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, how are you venting now? Are you I, writing your stuff in a diary? Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. Who you vent to? Because I'm not doing that. I'm right. not, I'm not, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I used to be that. I used to be that person right. who, that vented on Facebook. Mm-hmm. This was years ago. Right. Especially when Facebook first started. Well, not when it first started. When I first got on Facebook, like 2009, Yeah, I was too. Yeah. I, I delete everything now. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, I can't believe I said that. <laughs> yeah, I used to talk about <laughs> everything. Right. Up until it had to be like 2000 when I started working at G, mm-hmm. 2013, I was like, "What am I doing? Right? Why? Why am? Why am I telling all my personal feelings? And, <laughs> right. Like they don't. They don't need to know that. I right. don't want to know. I don't want to see other people post that. Right. So I mean, if I do post something, it's something like a joke. Like right. 90 percent of what I, I post on Facebook is a joke. Right. Just funny, right? Because you know we I'm, need that right now. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah. So it's just fun to me. Social media is is fun to me. I might post some positive stuff, and I might post some joking stuff. It's mm-hmm. nothing. I never post my personal life, what I'm doing, or or who I'm doing, or yeah. <laughs> or anything like that. Because it's not me. Yeah, because people just quick with that camera, like want to show a dead body. Yeah. Want to want to sh- I you know want to post? I got shot like. For some views, like people chase views, people yeah, chase likes, likes and, and people chase comments. It's it's that's all about uh, ego, right? So to answer your question, what needs to be done? Yeah, uh, I'm already doing it. Like I'm creating a po- Me and Drake are creating a positive energy that you know people can come together and represent the brand in a positive way. Uh, another person like Chris McBrayer. Like, yeah, you man. know, he's, he's, he's for real. Yeah. You know, the tie and ties, the, you know, doing what he's doing every Sunday. Now yeah. he's doing this woman thing. Like people like Chris need, you know, it, it needs to be people like that. That's doing it. Not yeah. just talking about it. Right. Go actually do it. Right. Yeah. I, uh, I commend him like so much for what, for what he's doing. Like you don't see, uh, that on a regular basis, and a black man who takes the time, he got his own kids. Right. He, a black man that takes 
his time out of his day to help other young black men and, and, and females or whoever he's helping. And to talk about the, the positive influence that he's given them. Like some of these kids don't, don't know their dads or haven't been around their dads Mm -hmm. or their big brothers or uncles. So to have somebody like that doing something, it's, it's a, it's a, a, it's refreshing. Yeah. Can you name uh, other people that's older than me and Chris, uh, other than the person that bought, that did, uh, that paid for everyone's scholarship at Scott. Can you name anyone older than us that's doing, that's supposed to be doing what Chris is doing? That's the problem right there. Yeah. So, but you know, older people are going to be like, Oh, this generation's lost. Gave up. I gave up on this generation. Duh, duh, right, duh. Right, so, right. you know, you got to have hope somewhere. Like I said, I'm kind of at that crossroads sometimes. Like, you know, this, this, this generation is gone, but yeah, you know, people like Chris ain't about to hear that. You know what right. I mean? So it, it's it's kind of sad that mm-hmm. that we feel that way, right? Um, at the same time, it's like okay, all this talk about like our kids ain't shit, mm-hmm. and you know uh, they just killing each other and all right. this stuff. We're not doing anything about it. No. One thing that I, I did, uh, I've been talking to my partners about is bringing kids uh, in here, like when all this stuff clear out, right. Uh, as far as like showing them different types of media, like Victor, my partner is, is a motivational speaker. Mm-hmm. So he deals with, uh, you know, mentoring kids and, you know, trying to get them on the right path, especially right. troubled kids. Uh, he's doing something with the juvenile department in Philadelphia, um, oh, okay. mental That's health in Detroit. So he's dealing with these people already that like, we can do this, um, as a collaboration here at home right. so we can ha- uh, help them uh, become positive and learn media at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it's different ideas, but ideas don't matter. No. Unless you actually yeah, do Because them. like I said, the kids mental health is, it's, 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 it's bad right now. Yeah. Mental they, health is, is bad with kids and with adults. Right. People my age who, yeah. who probably not where they want to be in life. Right. Uh, financially, uh, because of all the years of oppression and mm-hmm. uh, it's a cycle. Yeah, it's a cycle because how it starts is I know we, we I talked about the, the uh, Black Wall Street being tore down, all that stuff. But how it how that happen how that uh, affects us is when uh, white people back then right they, they came uh, when slavery ended. They still had houses. They mm-hmm. still had money. They still had banks. They still had bank accounts. Right, exactly. So, and they had land. So, with that land become comes what wealth, right? Wealth, and then that you can pass down from generation to generation. Mm-hmm. So that next person in line, your kid, your grandkid, kid already has equity, mm-hmm. and they have wealth built on on their uh, in in their name because their 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 grandfather and their great grandfather left that. Our people didn't have that. No. And a perfect example is Jerry Jones from your Dallas Cowboys. He has his whole family running the team. His yeah. son is the, you know, drafts the players. Uh, his, you know, daughter-in-law or whoever is the marketer. Right. Like, he's not passing that to no black person. No. No. no, no. That's, uh, that's all his family. He, yeah. he, do you see Michael Irvin up there? <laughs> do you see Deion Sanders up no. there? No. And, and and that's what they do. Like, but it, it has to start somewhere, like, um, will there be a black NFL owner? I don't know. Maybe when I have gray hairs, <laughs> maybe. Um, but you know, it, it has to start somewhere. Like, you know, my daughter, you know, she's like, I'm going to uncle Drake's store. That's fine with me. Like she knows it's uncle Drake's store. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's the beauty of it. You know what I mean? You know, you got to start somewhere, you know what I mean? And, and transfer that to, you know, to our kids, you know what I mean? Right. Instead of seeing what they see, you know, on a daily basis. Yeah, I think we uh, probably, I, I can't say that. I can't put the pressure on us as as entrepreneurs and business owners. Mm-hmm. But setting ourselves as an example, not just to our kids, but to other black men who aspire to be business owners. Right. Not that we have to go and teach them, but just by you and Drake being business owners at you, the young age that you are mm-hmm. and being successful can trigger somebody else who who's thinking, okay, I don't have to uh, 
be a drug dealer because that's that's that, that's quick money. Yeah, they make their quick money and then they you know they well they're not out because right. they, most likely they're gonna keep doing it over and over. Again. Yeah, yeah. But they they make that quick money and they say okay I can just do this. But to see somebody, a young black man being business owners, can be a positive influence on not just kids but older uh, young men and women. Um, I just wish that uh, there's somehow that they can attach themselves to that and and start businesses. Yeah. And, and it, it's just hard to. It's tough though because you, when you take the black man out the family, it's a wrap. Yeah, it's it's just, it's just a wrap. Right. So, you know, once um, you know they go to jail, or you know, it's two it's two types of su- survival mode. And they they explain this in the hidden colors like black people survive just to try to just eat. So, so if I don't have a job and I got this felon on my record, I got this felony record. Right. I think I'm gonna rob from my own because I need to survive. White people and, and uh, they have a different survival mode. They like I'm not giving this game. You're gonna have to research it like everyone yeah. else because yeah. I already know it. Right. You know, for instance, like. Uh, the Colin brand, the the business juke mode. I use them as a perfect example because that should have show black businesses that we that they they come after us. You know what I mean? Like when you know when we trademark Toledo, I trademark Toledo for a reason. And then these guys from juke mode that they make all the local shirts out here. Yeah, they want to do Toledo Ope. You know what? Yeah, they did that. Yeah, they did that. Wow. And uh he got a whole bunch the whole Facebook community came after him. Wow. Like we I like people was coming at him or coming at Jumo like, you need to take that shirt down now. And then you know, people was going there like we can't have nothing. We never can't have nothing because they always Right, right, right. Copy and make it their own form. Yeah. But that should have showed black people like, you know, we strong, like you we don't have to be in competition with each other like they the ones you want to be equal right, with, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, Juke Mode. They try to make a shirt called Toledo. I can't believe that. That's crazy. And and then the business owner was blowing up my phone like, "Yo, can you tell these?" I'm like, "Nah, you you messed up." What? He yeah, was you messed up. John Amato. Yeah. He called you. Yeah, he called me. <laughs> like you know, because he because people was making comments on his on his business page right. or on IG and Facebook like. And he over here commenting like, well, I talked to Chris and he said it was all right. I'm like, no, I didn't. I, you know, we had a conversation, but that don't mean I didn't say anything like uh, I'm not tripping about it. Like, right. you still try to copy our name. That's crazy. You know what I mean? So that's when I knew we was a real threat. Yeah. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Because that's, that's them trying to be on survivability mode. And you want to do it during a corona time. Oh, this you, was recently. Yeah, this was this was April. Wow, okay. Yeah, this was April when they want to come out with Tali Ope and they try to explain like, oh, it's a Midwestern saying like Ope oops, but I've never No, I've, I've been heard. I've been in Tali my whole entire life. Yeah. I've never heard oop or ope. Like <laughs> I've never heard that. And it's just deep, like that's when I that's when people need to like realize like like all these like, like people need to have their own clothing brand, their own business and you can you know, you can be a threat for real. You know right, what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, he tried to apologize. He came into the store when I wasn't there, and I'm pissed that I couldn't come in there and give him my black moment. I want to have my <laughs> black moment. I'm like, yo, you need to go watch it in colors, yeah, and see why you did what you did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I know we a threat out here. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, we legit all the way. Yeah. So. Yeah, people like Jumo, like, I don't have no respect for them, for real. You know what I mean? On top of that, we had got our hangers with our brand on them. Like, I went through y'all business to put Toledo up on the hangers. Really? And you still wow. had the audacity to try to come after us um, during the corona time because you, you decided to get a second storefront. You know what I mean? Right. So... That was your bad business decision. Obviously, you didn't predict the corona coming. Right. Yeah. But don't come after a small business like ours. and Appropriation. That's yeah, what it was. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I don't have no respect for for John and, and Jukemo. Like, they're going to have the city because, you know, they make 
four one nine pride shirts and whatnot, but um no. Nah. That's crazy that that <laughs> Then they had the audacity to ask Drake to tie dye their shirts. Like, no. Now I know Drake is legit. Right. Because you asking Drake to tie dye your shirts. Yeah. No. Absolutely not. Wow. And I wasn't there for that either. <laughs> I'm like, man, Drake, you need to call me when this food come in right, so I can man. go off, you know what I mean? But but Drake is so laid back. Me and Drake are so laid back. We never we just we just mellow. Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? But I was gonna go off because I care. Yeah. You yeah. know, Drake be like, Man, I don't get into <laughs> that, you know what I'm saying? But I'm the you know, that's why me and Drake are so different. Like Drake just wanna make the stuff, he wanna be different, and then I'm coming with my business and then like my business aspect and and then you know I care, like you right. know what I'm saying. It, I think it's good that that how that dynamic works between you two, um, especially the fact that he started the the actual uh, logo. He st- he put the logo together, and you saw and and you saw a bigger opportunity than what he uh, kind of ma- imagined, right? Right. And it was tough because I love Virginia and DC. Yeah, black people are eating. They eating. I mean, Atlanta is eating with our black people with black people there, but DC. I'm like an average Joe there with the IT field. Like, there's people that's getting real bread in D.C. with the government, with the government jobs. A, yeah, I got an uncle who works in uh, Pentagon down there. Man, I miss D.C. Oh, he retired from there. Yeah, like I sacrificed my happiness for real. Like, yeah. you know, but I seen. I, I was like, yo, as much as you know, Toledo is always going to be my home. But I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm going to be one of those that stay away from ever. That was always me. Like. I have no reason to come back. Yeah. I have my IT job in Virginia. I'm good. You know what I mean? And but when Drake presented that logo, I'm like, we got we got a we got a game changer here, you know what yeah. I mean? So um but yeah, DC, they 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 getting bread there, you know what I mean? So I just want to create that realm here. You know, me and Drake want to create that realm and like I said, I I had got things moving before he even thought about that because I didn't want Drake being another person doing this mobile, selling yeah. out the trunk, selling right. them out the house. No, black people need to see we can have our own storefront, period. Legit, yeah. And, like, my only job is to make sure everyone sees Drake's creative genius right. at yeah. the end of the day with this right. tie-dyeing, with custom-making for, for shoes and whatnot. You know what I mean? So... And then people having a pride about themselves representing the city of Toledo. You know, as much as the negativity is here, there is some bright spots. There is some dope people. There is some talented people here. Yeah. We just don't get the recognition because we're so small. So, yeah. but it can happen. I, I think that it, it it probably could happen more if we supported each other. Right. Like we should. Especially being a, as uh as black uh, uh, business owners or black uh, as being adults, period. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we take we, we look at somebody and say, "Why does he? Why is he doing that? Or who do, who does he think he is? Right? Because he he's got this is this brand. He's got this shirt, these shirts that he's making, or he's doing this. He's got his own. He's a singer. Like who, who does he think he is? Right. That's the mentality of Toledo. Well, yeah, it's a self hate thing. Um, it's probably I, a million. I, I don't even want to say Toledo because it it, it could be. Oh, you know, it's else. everywhere. Yeah. Oh, it's everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. Trust me. Right. Like Toledo ain't just a bad apple. Here. Right. Like, right. 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 There's plenty of cities that do that self hate thing. Yeah. Um, and they explain that in hidden colors as well why we do self hate. Um, but uh, um, like say for instance, like I was just talking to somebody today, like someone wants to open up something, and your closest family member, your closest friends are not going to support that. Because they're like, oh, why is he doing that? Like you just said. Yeah. Now they just want to see if you're gonna, f- how long you're gonna last. Mm. That's all they're gonna see. Yeah. So, for instance, we on year three, right? Right. It seems like we've been in a decade for real. Um, but like, like they see we're still going. Like we we're we're not we're not we're never quitting. So you can just <laughs> you can just bounce that off. Like I'm not even. Like the people I grew up with, like I'm not close with them. Like I'm, 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 a, I'm by myself. I'm soloed out. You know what yeah. I mean? Like if people see me at a bar or something, like yo, his, he by himself or some, or they'll see me like yo, or people don't even know I'm the owner. That's that's what I, that's what I like though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's what I like. But 
your your closest people will will see how long you stick out with your business venture, and then they gonna be like, oh yeah, so yeah, he failed, he quit after a year. Oh yeah, you, know, you come on back, man. Let's let's go right. get some let's go get something to eat. You know what I'm right. saying? Because I already knew, I already had that expectation like you was gonna fail. But if you go past a year or two or three, then they might come around like, yo, he. This he, is ser- he, he's he serious. Really doing this, right. He or she is serious for real. You know what right. I'm saying? So your closest people are always going to be like that because they like, yo, why why be different than than what we are? You know what I mean? We good. You yeah. know what I mean? Right, we right. good. You think you're better than us because you're doing that? <laughs> yeah, and that's not that. Because you got your little business? Yeah. First of all, my business ain't little. Right, right. This is legit. Exactly. I'm doing this for real. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you love me, you gonna support me, right. and not just saying that you got to come in and buy shirts, but support me by saying "good job" or "I'm right. proud of you." Right? Even I mean, just that a, a positive affirmation from uh, somebody that, that, that you love mm-hmm. that can be the, some of the biggest support that you can ever that you can mm-hmm. ever receive. Like, I don't like as long as I get a proud like. Suge Knight say I'm proud of you. Mom's saying I'm proud right, of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's all I care about. You know what? Yeah. I don't really <laughs> care about having proud of you from other people. Right, right, Like, right. I already know that I, I already know what me and Drake is doing. Yeah. Like, I just don't care. Like, we just. I we, like that about y'all. Though. <laughs> we just don't care. Right. Like, like uh, it's just it's just certain stuff we, we just nonchalant about for real. Like, like you going to support? If not, then. Oh, well. Oh, well. well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we don't chase people. We don't. You know what I mean? Like, it'll come around. Right. You know what I mean? The longer you're in, like, we don't, like I said, we almost passed year three. You, you're going to come around eventually. Yeah. You know what I mean? So right, right, right. I'm not really tripping. I'm not chasing, I'm not even chasing the money. Like, the money's going to come. You know what I mean? We just, like I said, a lot of people didn't even want to take that swim in that ocean. But we took that swim. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, kind of, he kind of dove in the, in the deep end, real deep end. Yeah, because he uh, Drake. I mean, he that's what he does, right? Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. Period. Like, you know, what I mean, like, you know, Drake. Drake has always been creative. You know, what I mean, he, you know, the short story. He 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 used my daughter's crayons to 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 add the little pe to the to Toledo, and the rest is history for real. You know, wow. what I mean, like. We just want to create an Olympic theme, a Google theme, you know, and stand out from everyone else, and that's just what it is, you know what I mean? But that that made it so recognizable mm-hmm. when you put the Olympic torch on there, exactly. and, and the rings, the Google rings, right? I was like, oh, because somebody said, "Is that what is that like an Olympic uh, <laughs> exactly. shirt?" No, it's Toledo, right? So that and, that kind of made people like it, it draws people to it. And then like when customers come in, like, "Yo, we need something to wear at the airport." That's great for me. If you don't want to wear it in Miami or yeah. wherever, D.C., whatever, Cali, like you just want to wear it at the airport. You yeah. want to flex on Detroit. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm great with that. You know what I'm saying? Because, right. you know, Detroit has always been considered whatever big brother or whatever and whatnot. Right. But, you know, they got their brands, Detroit versus everybody yeah. and all that. But, nah, like people like people from Toledo are very prideful. Like you, you got to earn our respect. You know what I mean? Because we do. You know, I mean, we we blue collar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we blue collar. Like ninety five percent of people is at Chevrolet, at Jeep, yeah, at these factories. Like, you know, we put in work. Right now, I want to represent it. You know, what I'm saying where I'm from. Yeah. So, you what, know, what what's next as far as like what? what do you, I know you're gonna, you're gonna do the the golf uh, tournament. Mm-hmm. So what's next after that? Like, you have any plans as far as clothing? Uh, um, the brand itself. I mean, we got some. We got some ideas we're gonna push. I uh, can't really speak much on it. Okay. Um, it's some different. It's some different designs. Um, I don't know if people like some people like kind of gravitate to our other one with the with the Toledo with the Ohio in it. Yeah, you know what I mean. I don't know. If, I don't know if yeah, you've seen. I've it. seen it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we just pretty much put the Ohio in, in between Toledo. You know, that's kind of like our third, fourth design for real. Um, but yeah, we're coming out with some exclusive in the fall. That should break, you know. That should be good for us. You okay. know what I'm saying. Um, but this golfing event, um, I, I'm excited for that. Like I said, I've never been on a golf course my entire life, um, and you know, I need to get into that realm because people need to evolve. Yeah. I need to evolve. I, I, I got a lot of learning to do. Like I said, I'm only two and a half years in business. Right. 
You know what I mean? So how did the golf thing come about? Like what, where did that come from? Well, I just graduated from UT uh, with my IT degree. Oh, and they, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and they had, uh, they just been su- sending out numerous emails, uh, UT alumni, blah, 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 blah. blah. So right. they, they hold a, an annual event for the golf tournament out in Holland. And I'm just like, I'm, I, I'm just, I'm just looking at it. I'm like, you know what? I need, I need to do this. You know what I mean? I just had an epiphany like, yo, I, I need to step out the, the realm. Right. Um, because we don't do pop-ups no more. Okay. We don't. Like, I'm not in that box. Yeah. We, we not in that box no more. Um, so I was like, let me step outside my comfort zone because I need to learn how to talk to white people. Right. I just do. Yeah. I've never been in a that could be a scary sight for black people. Like you the only black person in that room and you got 10 older white people and they already got their judgments. Yeah. So why not put myself in that box? Why, why not put myself in that room and, and show them like, yo, this ain't, I'm not just no average person. I'm not no average black person right? for real. Cause I consider myself, I'm, I'm at the 1% to 1%. Like there's 1% of the people that join the military. Hmm. There's only 1% that joins. Okay. And then now you have another 1% that I do IT for the government. Hmm. The, there's not a lot of people doing IT for the government. Right. So I'm already kind of putting myself in those top percents that I need to be in. So, um, but I'm excited for Monday. Like I said, hopefully it go well, but I need to continue to improve uh, how to, you know, network not with just my own people, with just with white people for yeah. real. So, like I said, the iHeart Radio thing that happened uh, Halloween uh, last year that was that was good, even though it was a, a horrible weather that day. <laughs> um, but hopefully, iHeart Radio got a first good first impression on us. Yeah, because we did the iHeart uh, iHeart Radio with the um, with our logo, so we had oh, okay. you know what I mean. Yeah. So, so you got to continue to build those first impressions with them. With, with white people for real. And then they'll be like, okay, he's serious. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah, it, I know a lot of people are probably thinking, okay, you don't need white people to legitimize <clears throat> your, your business. Mm-hmm. But if you want to expand and become, uh, not just a brand within your, uh, your neighborhood, yeah. that's what you got to do. You, no, do you need white out. people. Yeah, you do. You need uh, white people. Yeah. Even, even with what I'm doing here, like I don't want to just interview us. Right. That's why I had Eric Chase from 105.5 on here. Mm-hmm. Just I'm reaching out and reaching out to other people so we can partnership in, in some areas. We talked about maybe we can, uh, 419 Grind can partner with uh, 105.5 Q to be, so the 419 Grind can become a podcast network right? like iHeartRadio. Right. I mean, the perfect example is Snowfall. Like yeah. I didn't watch Snowfall until like, Last week, I watched all every episode and finished the season wow. all one, two, three within within days. Wow! Because I was just that addicted to it. But Franklin needed a white person. He needed Teddy from the CIA. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? He needed you know you you gonna need white people at the end of the day, like, yeah, because that's what they have. But right. they got don't reach. call. Them, but yeah, don't call them. But at the same time, don't call them a sellout. That's why it's hard to be in black. Because right, you're gonna right. hear from the black lash, like you yeah, said. Yeah, I hate that. That's why it's hard to be black. It is because you 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 got your own hate on you, right? Then you got the people who create your own problems, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Right. You had to climb those mountains. Yeah. So that's the thing. That's why it's all it's being a black man or being a black woman is always gonna be it's, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough because you're gonna you're gonna get it from both sides, right? You and and that's why I commend people who. Um, who can build their brands up from nothing? Mm-hmm. I don't want to say nothing, but yeah, nothing, right? Because no, nobody gave you anything to say. Hey, here's here's two hundred thousand dollars to start your business. Yeah. No, you just came up with that on your own and say, mm-hmm. okay, we need to. And then you decided to say, okay, we're going to reach out to these people over here. We're going to stick with this brand. Not we're not going to change our logo for nothing. This right. is it. This is it. This is this, this is how, this is how it's going to be. Mm-hmm. And you either love it or you're going to hate it. You either going to buy it or you're going to ignore it. Right. And then we're going to reach out to these people, and then we're going to get their money. We're going to mm-hmm. get their dollars. Exactly. And I commend people like that who stick to what they know, and 
and still can reach out to other people and expand their brand and ignore all the, the negativity and the hate within the community and still do what they do. Cause I don't care. Right. Exactly. <laughs> period. You know what I mean? And then like, you know, people from the hood, they could, they can easily call me and Drake Carlton. Cause right. we had two parents, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, but right. we was middle class, lower middle class for real. Yeah. Like I said, we was in apartments all our, you know, all our life until, you know, till 1999 for real. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, I it wasn't like we got a grant or we got a <laughs> loan. Like I invested my own personal bread and I'm still am. Right. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to keep it going. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, we, we, we from, like I said, I called the 19 F. I caught the 19 T yeah, right. If people know about, you know, catching that tartar. Right. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm not from the gutter, but I know I've seen some stuff for real. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah, we didn't, we wasn't handed no silver spoon for real. Like Suge Knight was tough. Like Suge Knight was tough for me way more than Drake. Cause yeah. that's how people, that's how firstborns get it. Yeah, you know I what I mean? I'm the oldest son. So, so yeah, you know, like it ain't no easy street. Right. Like I didn't, that's that's where that's why I want to get my message apart. Like um, that we didn't we wasn't we didn't we wasn't growing up on bread. We we got it. You know what I mean yeah. from from the start. Right. Uh, you got it from the mud, basically. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. So yeah. I mean that's the grind. That's the that's the thing. That's the love of. Uh, that's why I love Toledo people, mm-hmm. um, who who can work themselves up from. Um, where they start from where they are now, like people like Sade, yeah, got yeah, her own yeah. store, exactly. No flinching, no nothing. She just does what she does and don't care. No, yep, exactly. And that, and I got a cousin named uh, Shakita who got her own. Uh, uh, she sells her clothes. Never stopped. No matter what is going on, she keep grinding. And don't care what nobody say about her. Right. She's gonna still do what she do. Exactly. And that's what y'all do. Y'all still y'all do what y'all do. No matter what nobody says or does or or tries to copy or say bad things about about who you are, mm-hmm. do what you do. I, I mean, that's why I tell uh, tell other people: just do what you do. Don't don't care about what people think. I don't care what what people think about me. People will probably hate me. I don't I don't know. I don't care. Right, right. But I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this regardless. I'm gonna have people mm-hmm. on and talk. If they don't like what we saying, change change to a d- different mm-hmm. video. Right. Or or change it to a different podcast. I don't care. Yeah. Because I'm gonna talk about what I want to talk about. This is my show. And if you don't like it, don't watch it. Yeah. If you don't like Toledo, don't buy it. Yeah. But you want people to buy people to buy it though. You want yeah, I mean, to, I mean I mean, yeah. yeah That's right. just all about marketing and having a business. You still want people to buy it, but the negativity, I don't care about it. Yeah. I mean we we never invested into that. Um but yeah, shout out to Sade and you know what I'm saying, and you know, Gerald Riley from yeah. from Mud Made, uh, you know, Daryl Brown obviously from Midwest Kids, like, you know, you know, people out here getting it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it needs to be highlighted more. You know, we got a lot of talented people in Toledo, we got a lot of talented people talented people from Ohio. Yeah. And it just needs to be showcased for real. That's, like, what, I'm, that's as, what I'm trying as to do. As far as the Midwest goes anyway, yeah. because you know, the East Coast going to have their fashion. They got their rappers. L.A., they got their rappers. Yeah. They got their fashion. Right. Uh, so the Midwest, like, people are always trying to consider the Midwest a slow region. We're really not. You know what I'm saying? Right. But we just don't get that. We don't get that shine in those areas for real. You right. Know what I mean? They, they so, say we behind it behind the times yeah. in, in fashion and in music. Mm-hmm. And no, we're really we, not. No, no we just got we gotta have a different swag. We have a different feel. Right. Than the East Coast. We can't be East Coast. We're we're not from yeah. the East Coast. We can't be West Coast because we're not West Coast. Mm-hmm. So we have actually it's between St. Louis and Cleveland. Right. It's where that, that re that Midwest region is. And we we and we not uh we we not in the media like that like other than other than Chicago they in the media yeah. they do you know they got to show the shy and all that but these other states they not getting that media attention like that because right. you know New York and L A they gonna get all that media attention for real but yeah. Ohio's not getting that media attention when it comes to those specifics right yeah yeah for real you know what I mean yeah. like you know Ock Obama the reporter like. These cats are serious, you know what I mean? Yeah, I was about to say, we got some heavy hitters. For heavy. Real. Yeah. You know, but like I said, like, they should be getting as much shine as uh, as these other rappers in Atlanta or L.A. for real. Right. Because they, they, got, they got bars, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I think if we had, like, a, a industry that we built here as far as fashion and music, mm-hmm. 
that we could get to some kind of media co- coverage, even if we have to create our own media right. and, and send it out. Right, exactly. And put it out on on the on the web, on yeah. YouTube, on Facebook, and, and send it and let people see it. Yeah. It's just all about uh, media people coming together and doing it. Yeah. That's all. But it's, that's a tough market because, I mean, are you, you know, are you asking w two o l and you know a b c thirteen or you know n b c twenty four like you know they control that they right control that yeah. you know right. what i mean so or i i can create a documentary called the the toledo brand right and talk to and 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 follow toledo around the city mm-hmm. and mud made and Chade and talk about you know, how you build your brands and how you go about your daily routines. I mean, it yeah. could be something simple as that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, this is the perfect podcast, the 419 Grind. Yeah. It's, it's it's perfect, you know, because that's what all of us is doing for real. Right. Grinding. Because like, we have a different grind than anybody else in the, yeah. in the world, for real. E- easy. easy. A different grind. We have a different type of grind. When you take somebody like Gerald Riley, who came up with Mud Maid, mm-hmm. and, and it's almost – Nationwide now, right? That's called the four. That's the four one nine grind. That's the mm-hmm. definition of the four one nine grind. Exactly. When you take Toledo, who just came together, this guy drawn on on a <laughs> piece of paper with a with a, a crayon, mm-hmm. and created a a, a a a statewide brand that's that can be seen all across the nation. That's that's the four one nine grind. That's yeah. what it's about. That's the definition. Yeah, it, it's I, I like the fact that. Um, we can adopt um, each other mm-hmm. as far as like I'm Toledo, right? Because I I'm, I'm from Toledo, and I think what I do is dope, right? So. Exactly. <laughs> That's the whole point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, our name is catchy, but you know, it's not Toledo dope. It's just Toledo. <laughs> you right. Know what I'm yeah. saying? So, like I said, we got dope people. They just need to be highlighted more at the end of the day. And like I said, that that just takes time for real. Like yeah. I said, a lot of people. It's, there's a lot of people that still don't know about us for real. Yeah, that's crazy. And, and you know, um, and I just know that recently because I'm like, yo, this is your first time in here, right? <laughs> and uh, he or she be like, yeah, it is my first time in here. How you know? I'm like, I can just tell. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, because cause, cause people be like, yeah, I've been seeing it everywhere. That's the thing. People yeah. be like, yo, I've been seeing it everywhere on Facebook. Right, blah, right, blah, right. Blah, blah. Now I want one. Yeah. That's just how it goes. That's trend. That's how trends go. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. So, uh, am I mad at that? No, you know, um, I had to have real, uh, real expectations. Right. You know what I mean. So. Yeah. That's what it is. Right. I mean, I, I appreciate your work ethic. Um, that's that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to have you on is to talk about you know your work work ethic as far as like getting the brain out there because i know you that you're the marketing person mm-hmm. uh, of the business so i mean that's kind of what i, I try to do <laughs> but, right you know i'm still learning i mean even when you try to do the three on three you see i was all in yeah, yeah it didn't yeah. matter right right right. i don't care like right, let's yeah. do it exactly. <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i didn't i had no fear like let's see if it goes somewhere you know what i mean right so i i never you know if i want to do collab with you know with other black businesses I'm all I'm all in. If it's if it's a benefit for both parties, I'm right. all in. Yeah, you know what I mean. That three on three could have worked for real. If, I mean, if it had the right people. Right, right, exactly. It still can. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I've been thinking it's just not this year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> I've been thinking about it. I say, okay, maybe in 2021. Right. Um, I got the funds for it. Right. It's just that you know we have to wait now. Right. And eventually, you know, it could it could happen. Yeah. It, it's, it could be something that can be. Uh, something that we do from zero and make and take it to a hundred. Yeah. And you got to have the right team. Like, yeah, yeah. Me and Drake don't have a team. Right. It's me and Drake. Right. And my boy from Virginia that did our website and shout out to Larry. And, you know, he'll be here for the golfing event. Okay. That's, that's, that's my homie. He do it. We relate on a whole bunch of different levels. Um, but yeah, you got to have a team like, um, and you got to dissect who's going to be right for that team. Right. Um, because, you know, men has egos. Men want to be wolves. Right. You know, you can't feed everybody. Right. People don't know their roles. Yeah. So you got to find people that know their roles. That's why LeBron and his little, you know, his four horsemen, if you want to call it, that's too rare. You're not going to find people that, oh, 
Yeah, you're not gonna find that, that. That you grew up with, and they, you're not you find finding that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They grew up together, and they this that was a once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime. Yeah, you're not finding that nowhere. Right. I don't care what state you in, what city, what little small town. You, yeah. You're not finding that for real. Yeah, to, to to find somebody with the same passion, the same desire, the same goal, the same mm-hmm. uh, uh, wherewithal as far as getting that 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 reaching that goal, it, it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's hard. And I will continue to be that lone wolf, for yeah. real. You know, I, you know, I'll continue. Like, I don't really talk to people I went to high school with, barely. You know I what I mean? I don't think I do. Either. I don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just what it is. People evolve, and then other people don't. Yeah. They want to be, you know, I don't really knock for people that like, yo, this is my life. I'm cool. And that's what it is. And then you got people like me, like, yo, I've been to Africa in 04. I went to Africa at 17 years old. I've seen it. Right. I've seen what I've seen it bigger. I've seen the whole world. So I can't I'm not gonna knock people who don't want to travel. I'm not gonna knock those people. Right. People got their simple lives and then I got my life. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's you know, it's it's cut from a different cloth for people. Yeah, I mean so. people ask me like why why do you keep trying to do stuff? <laughs> why? Why you keep? Why you? Why you still trying to do stuff? Like, that's 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 just what's in me. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't help it. Right. Like I, I I can't just sit down and say, or I can't just go to work and then go home and sit down and and do what? Read a book? Okay, yeah. I can read a book, but I can't just do that. This is that's not what that's not that's not how I made. Right. I I'm always pursuing something. Mm-hmm. To to become better, I don't think it's just because I want to be a better version of myself, but to leave uh, some kind of legacy for my kids. Right. That's that's my my ultimate goal. Yeah. And, and yeah. right. And and that's and you hit it spot on. Like I didn't know. Like I said, I've been gone a decade from Talil. Like yeah. I don't know. No, I don't. I didn't know. No. I didn't really research what clothing brands was out of here. I just right. did it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like right. no. We we just gonna we just gonna do it, you know what I mean? Right. I'm, I don't talk, I'm just gonna do it, you know what I mean? So, I commend you uh, for for doing this this podcast. Like, like I said, we don't know each other very well, but you right. like we we here with this with this yeah. trying to you know trying to do stuff for this city, you know what I mean? So, yeah. like I said, people don't have that mindset at my age, but you know people don't have your mind that that mindset at your age. Yeah. So you got to have those two to get, you got to continue to right, find right. those people. And that's tough here. Yeah. O- only person that I end up finding with the same mindset is Victor Coleman Jr. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know him or not. No, I just, I just had him today. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, and, that's my business yeah. partner, him and Leah. So we, we kind of came, we kind of had a conversation that turned into this. I was already doing a podcast at home. Mm-hmm. So we had the conversation like, you know, I, I was thinking like, you know, I, maybe one day, I'll move it into a studio. He was like, why not now? Yeah. Yeah, why not now? Why not? I mean, why, what am I waiting for? Why not now? So we said, okay, let's come up with uh, an idea. Let's come up with uh, a strategy so we both can benefit from it. Exactly. You benefit from it. I'll benefit from it. And we'll, we'll make some money. We'll, we'll, even if we don't make money, right. we can make some progress and make an impact on the city. Exactly. So, yeah. That's what it's all is about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm just trying to, uh, to, of course, become a better version of me, and to help other people um, become better at what they do. So e- either that's uh, having people on like you, right, who can be an inspiration to other people, or they can learn from what we you know what we talk about. Yeah, I mean, like I said, there's no age limit on inspiring people. Yeah, you know what I mean. But people need to tune in. You know they need to tune in to these podcasts for real, but I like I said that. they they really do because yeah. right, with this corona going on, like what else are yeah. you tuning into other right. than uh, yeah, watching the news yeah, all day? Yeah. yeah, which is negative from the jump. Yeah, and you know you want to Facebook live some shots. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you want to speaking of live, we are going to start doing live shows on 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 uh, Facebook Facebook Live. That's what's up with the DJ. <laughs> So Scott okay. Smooth, we me and Scott Smooth already talked about it, doing okay. some some live shows on on the four one nine grind just to do some something different, yeah, a party that somebody can go to without having to go to a party. That's what it's about because 
them house parties ain't hot. <laughs> no. it, ain't, it ain't 90s. Yeah. It ain't yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> that's them days over. Yeah, people getting sick and stuff. Mm-hmm. Or get or getting hurt. Yeah, yeah. getting hurt. Yeah. So, But I, I appreciate you uh, coming on, on, on the podcast. Oh, um, the pleasure, man. Like I said, I mean, when you, you hit, hit me on the messenger, I'm like, yeah, I'm there. <laughs> Hey, I'm in, I'm there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like I don't, I don't. Like this is what it's about for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about support. Support exactly. Yeah. I don't care how big, how small you are. Like, right. Like one day you could be like, yo, I was on there. Right. Yeah. That's what it's about for real. Yeah. I was in that store. I was in that person's store. I was in that girl's store. Yeah. And you know, now she's blown up. Now he blown up. You know that's what it's all about. Yeah. So. I pre- next time have your brother come on so we can and I'll have Victor here so we can do like a, a whole a session oh yeah let's get it in yeah yeah, yeah. you know what I mean alright well, well we'll talk soon alright there it is alright Toledo rep your city visit us online at the 419grind.com 419grind.com